In this video, we're going to talk about the anterior cerebral artery, which we have highlighted here in dark blue. As you can see, it makes up the majority of the anterior portion of the circle of Willis, which is completed by the anterior communicating artery just here. The anterior cerebral artery, or ACA, is one of the terminal branches of the internal carotid artery just here, the other of which being the MCA. We'll be talking about all the branches of the ACA in this video before grounding them in their anatomical relations. In order to do that, let's get rid of a few more bones. And as you can see, we've brought in one of the, the, the key anatomical relations of the ACA, that is the corpus callosum. We divide the ACA into five segments, uh, the first of which, A1, extends from the ICA until the anterior communicating artery. If we bring that back in there, that's the anterior communicating artery, and until there we have A1. Departing from A1, we have the medial lenticulostriate arteries, and the anterior communicating artery is said to depart from A1 as well. A1 is also known as the pre-communicating segment, which is a pretty intuitive name given that it is prior to the anterior communicating artery. A2, on the other hand, is the post-communicating segment, which continues until the genu, this curve here in the corpus callosum. So from the anterior communicating artery until the genu is A2, from which departs the recurrent artery of Hebner, an artery that's not included in this model, but which departs in the proximal A2 segment to run parallel to A1 to supply some important structures of the basal ganglia. Also departing from A2 is the medial orbitofrontal artery, which, as you may have suspected, supplies the orbital gyrus and the inferomedial frontal lobe in the anterior cranial fossa. That's the medial orbitofrontal artery. The third branch from A2 is the frontopolar artery, which intuitively supplies the frontal pole of the cerebral cortex, particularly its medial aspect. So that's the frontopolar artery there. We then move on to this section of the ACA, which is known as the pericolosal artery. And the remaining three segments of the ACA are made up by this pericolosal artery. So A3 runs from the genu until the artery curves quite acutely posteriorly. A4 is from this section here until, until the coronal suture, which if we bring in the frontal bone, we have the coronal suture just here. So until that point, we have A4. And then from then on, we have A5, the last segment of the ACA. From the A5 segment, we have the precuneal branches. Let's remove the frontal bone again to bring in our next significant branch of the ACA, which is the callosomarginal artery. It departs from the A3 segment to run in the cingulate sulcus, which we'll get to in a moment. It throws off a number of branches, so it throws off an anteromedial frontal branch, an intermediomedial frontal branch, a posteromedial frontal branch, as well as paracentral branches, not included in this model, and singular branches. That's C for singular branches just here. Okay, so that's all of the branches of the ACA. Now we just need to bring in the relevant anatomy so that we can uh, give this all a bit more context. So here is here we've brought in the, the left cerebral cortex. Now you may remember I mentioned the, the medial lenticulostriate arteries, which depart from A1, supply the globus pallidus, just here, as well as the medial putamen, just lateral to that structure. The anterior communicating artery provides this important anastomosis between left and right ACA, which occurs just anterior to the hypothalamus here. The anterior pituitary is another important and close relation of the ACA. So they're both closely related to A1. Then A2 takes us to the genu of the corpus callosum. 
And then from A3, I want to talk about the colloso marginal artery, which runs along the superior aspect of the cingulate gyrus just here. And this is the, the cingular sulcus just above, which the colloso marginal artery runs in. This is the orbital gyrus, which I mentioned earlier. That's the medial orbitofrontal artery curling around the orbital gyrus, as well as contributing to the supply of the superior frontal gyrus, which all of these frontal branches of the colloso marginal artery clearly contribute to as well. I mentioned these precuneal branches down at the posterior aspect, departing from A5. These supply the precuneus, which is the medial surface of the superior parietal lobule, which is this section of the cerebrum just here. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you got something out of that and we'll see you in the next video.